Justin Miller playing five color Niv Mizzet. Miller winning the Pioneer Classic last weekend in Richmond with five color Niv Mizzet and looking to run it back here against Mono Black Aggro. Ayers Lee and Fortinelli on your left, Miles Miller and Stetter on your right. These players will be given the green light here in just a moment and we will be underway our first match of the day here from Philadelphia. It'll be a Temple of Epiphany here for Justin Miller. Russell. He will leave that card on top, and we'll head back over to Russell Lee. Russell and I have an understanding that the next team tournament that I'm available for, he and I will play together. Cool. So never. Got it. Not for a long time. Yeah, got it. Got it. Not for a long the time. Em the most empty of promises <laughs> by you. Really well done. A Dread Wanderer here for Russell Lee. And that'll be a Muta Vault, and here is an attack for two. We'll see if there will be a follow-up here from Lee at all. It does look like a strange start here from Justin Miller where you've got Temple of Epiphany into Temple Garden. So red, blue, green, and white mana. What's the deal with that? I think Miller might be on five cards to start this game. Some mulligans. This is a Scrap Heap Scrounger and passing the turn back over to Justin Miller. So Miller will draw a card. I like the feeling of my opponent mulliganing a lot and then opening on the, those two lands. I'm like, yeah, no wonder. Sure. Here is Uro. Titan of Nature's Wrath. This one is a powerful one. Going to get to draw a card, play an additional land. There's an overgrown tomb. There's a battlefield tap. Then, of course, gain three life. Great against aggro and control alike. So we'll head back over to Russell, who will play a Castle Lock Vane. And now he'll fire off a Thought Seize. Thought Seize will reveal at least one copy of Niv Mizzet Reborn. See if we can get a better look at the other cards that are in the hand as Niv Mizzet Reborn is headed to the graveyard. I think just a Ruru left over. Okay. Here's an attack with the Muta Vault along with the Dread Wanderer and the Scrap Heap Scrounger. That'll be seven points of damage, and we are going to head back over to Justin Miller, who has a Fabled Passage. He'll sacrifice that right away, and I think he may have drawn Niv-Mizzet, perhaps? He's going to check his lands here. we got a blue, a white, a green, and a black. So if we need a fifth color, that shouldn't be too tough. There's blue, green, black, mm. white, red. So we got all five colors of mana here for the five-color Niv Mizzet deck. And is it time to perhaps drop the hammer? It was a good draw step. It is Niv Mizzet Reborn. Okay. Let's take a look at the top handful of cards here. We're looking for color combinations to draw a couple of cards because this deck can draw some very powerful ones. So, Teferi, Dreadbore, and that's going to be it. Not the most exciting, but it is worth noting. Drawing two cards, not bad. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, it's going to be the biggest thing on the battlefield here as well if uh, Lee does not have a removal spell. We're going to go back over to Russell Lee. Here comes an attack as that Niv Mizzet was destroyed via drag to the underworld. A new one there from Theros Beyond Death. There's Teferi. Teferi's going to bounce Scrap Heap Scrounger. Miller will draw a card. Leaving the mana left over here to Dreadbore if he wants it. Yep. Not a great Dreadbore target, but... Fabled Passage is the land. Going to sacrifice the Fabled Passage. Looks like Miller's thinking Basic Swamp. Yeah, maybe Basic Forest instead. There's Uro. I'm threatening the escape next turn here. So pulling himself up to 13. 
having a Teferi Time Raveler that necessitates you would like to answer if possible, and then having to play through that the six six the following turn. Asking a lot here of Lee that Niv Mizzet really just unleashed a a well of resources here. There goes Teferi from the Dreadwander attack. That part's pretty straightforward. Here's a Blood Soak Champion. Scrap Heap Scrounger. Mutavault's still back there along Castle Lockvane and passing other turns. So back over to Justin Miller we're going to go. Remember Miller coming off of a Pioneer Classic win last weekend in Richmond. Now it's time to assess the battlefield. Does have the ability to escape Uro here if the mana cooperates? He can do it. I'm trying to see if he can do that plus Dreadbore. I believe the answer is yes. Also has Nahiri. I don't think Nahiri is the best thing to be doing on this battlefield, though. You know, the unique thing here about this five-color Niv Mizzet deck is that it can do so many different things because it has so many different gold cards, so it's kind of hard to play around all of them. And it does have a bunch of singletons that are pretty good, too. Yeah, the upside the upshot is that a lot of them are uh, sorcery speed, so you do get to see everything. But yeah, there's a wide array of things this deck is capable of doing. All right, well, there's Nahiri going to exile the Dreadwanderer, so that's gone. And now Klythos. Wow. A little surprised to see that one show up. Not facing lethal this turn. Is that a one of fun of? That is. that. I mean, that's the definition of a one of fun of for sure, so... The three mana four five indestructible, as long as you have devotion to red and green that is less than seven, it's not a creature. So not a creature right now. Actually kind of far away from becoming a creature, but at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card in a graveyard. If it was a land card, you get a red or green mana. Otherwise, you gain two life, and Clythos deals two damage to each opponent. So Nahiri is going to get killed. The follow-up Scrap Heap Scrounger passed the turn back. And we're going to see just how good Clythos can be right now. So we head back over to Justin Miller. So he has the ability here to pull himself up from uh, up to five here. And then the Uru can get him up to, I guess, eight to 11. Yeah, it's not a bad position. Could, you could play through from here. Well, he's certainly looking to because he's reaching for the graveyard. Hero's such a powerful card. That's going to be escaped. So coming back from the graveyard, which means it'll get to stick on the battlefield with a 6-6. Six, six. Gain three life, draw a card. Still the ability to play Dreadboard right now, too. But back in the spot here where there's just not that much appealing to do with a Dreadboard. Yeah, I mean, it's not your favorite, for sure. We will get our life totals updated here. They look to be backwards right now, but obviously Justin Miller is very much behind in this game. And now there's Dreadboard to take care of the Scrap Heap Scrounger, which is a temporary solution to the problem because Scrap Heap Scrounger can obviously come back, but there is no creature in the graveyard to bring the Scrounger back, I will say that. Yeah, and the gods threatening just to be, do work on the graveyard anyway, so it might not be the easiest thing to get back. Here come the attacks. There's a pretty straightforward block. Five damage is going to come through. Now there's Fatal Push. And a Mutavault is... That's a really good follow-up Mutavault. Yep. Miller without the resources here in the graveyard to be able to escape here. And a god that does not amount to a whole lot. So this draw is going to have to be good. Clathos is going to take care of the Scrounger. Gain a little bit of life. You, you mentioned this draw step is going to have to be a good one. Gilded Goose making a food token. I mean, it could be worth... Uh, the Gilded Goose might be worth a redraw. I mean, you got a chump blocker and a food token. And a lot of Miller's heavy hitters can pull him out of this next turn. Here is Rankle. 
pretty good draw, car, card to draw off the top of the deck. Now, Gilded Goose does have flying. And it looks like five damage is going to come through. Going to sacrifice the food token to gain some life, obviously. So now, still facing lethal next turn. Yeah. Needs a big draw. Bring the light, probably the best draw right now. Lithos, we're going to get a trigger here. Drag to the Underworld is going to get removed. Nahiri off the top. So I don't think this amounts to another turn, right? We get to kill Rankle, and then I, I'm assuming our life totals are correct here. I'm looking at No, the seven. Drain, drain pulled them up to, to nine. Up to nine? Okay, sure. So it's a good enough for a redraw. Well, how about Rankle? Three, six, seven, eight. And then you can... The and then, yeah, yeah the, 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 drinkle, the yeah. Rankle Trigger. Yeah. The Rankle Trigger. Yeah. Doesn't come into play all that much, but does come into play there. So, Russell Lee. Some timely top decks there with back-to-back -back Rankles. Going to win game number one here over Justin Miller. As Mono Black Aggro is now up a game over five-color Niv Mizzet. Our matchup there on the bottom between Mono Red Aggro in the hands of Bobby Fortinelli and Nick Stetter playing Team of Reclamation. They're still in game number one, and then you see Daryl Ayers and Drew Miles. That's an Amulet Titan against Mono Red Prowess. Looks like they may have finished up the first game, so we'll get an update there for you if we can. But for right now, we are going to look at the sideboards here between Lee and Miller. Miller, with his five-color Niv Mizzet deck, has two copies of your favorite. Wow. Voice of Resurgence. Well, with two rest in peace, two thought season. A lot of one-ofs here in the Scarab God questing beast. Rakdos' return, Mystical Dispute. Thought Erasure, Camball, Council of Allocation, a Slesnia Charm, an Infernal Reckoning, and a copy of Deafening Clarion. Well, I definitely like the Deafening Clarion here. Um, the rest of this, uh, I mean, I could be touching the Scarab God. Cuts out some of the Graveyard Shenanigans. It's just not an easy thing for, for Lee to answer. The two copies of Voice of Resurgence, uh, I mean, I, I just don't think... It, the things that it can block in this matchup are so recurring and enduring of threats that I just don't think you want to set yourself up that way. Uh, I'm okay with the Questing Beast again. It's like a way to get on offense and not a terrible blocker. That's but not a bad blocker in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, I, Miller doesn't have a whole lot that's appealing to me. Over here for Russell Lee, four Leyland of the Void, two Aethers for Harvester, two Duress, two Agonizing Remorse, two Noxious Grasp, a Legion's End, a Witch's Vengeance, and a Shadow Spear. So in the abstract, I like Duress against Control decks, but so much of what Miller has is creatures. I think it's still above the line to bring in. You could bring in a, uh, a better mixture of removal. I'm not super into Fatal Push in this matchup. Uh, and, you know, a lot of your anti uh, certain color type of hate is going to work against all the threats that Miller produces, but pretty light sideboarding here, too. Not into Ley Lines or Aether Sphere Harvesters. So you're just looking at Duress and Maybe making, mixing up the removal package a little bit. Well, there you go. Game number two about to be underway here between Russell Lee and Justin Miller here in just a moment as we're going to prepare to watch more Mono Black Aggro do battle against the very innovative and fun five-color Niv Mizzet deck. For now, we turn our attention to something special that Star City Games did announce very quickly. It's going to be taking place here. It's our enhanced open trial. That will be taking place Saturday, February 15th. That's next Saturday during the World Championships. One day only, as you can see. You can visit a participating store near you and get access to a bunch of fun goodies like free event vouchers, tokens, play mats, and all that stuff. As We've kind of partnered up with stores that are running that Worlds tournament as well, where players can get Crucible of Worlds. And we prepare to watch game number two here between Miller and Lee. Miller starting things off with a Temple of Deceit scrying and passing the turn back over to Russell Lee. And talked at the top of this. And, you know, you can make the argument Thoughtseize and Immutable, the 1 and 1A one of the format. Really good match there for Thoughtseize there from Lee's side, and specifically for Mutavault. I don't think Lee is able to win that game or he really even come close if that Mutavault was another swamp. Here is a swamp, and that's a Thoughtseize. So there is Clythos once again, along with Nahiri. Looks like maybe a copy of Languish. A breeding pool, a temple garden, and a fabled passage. Thing to keep in mind here is that the mana that Miller currently has allows him to play Nahiri or Languish, but not both. Because mm -hmm. that fabled passage either needs to get a swamp for Languish or a mountain for Nahiri.
Russell Lee consulting his teammates, trying to figure out which way to poke a hole with his Thoughtseize. It's also notable that we started the game with Thoughtseize as opposed to a one-drop, because I think you'd prefer to start the game with Mono Black Aggro with a one-drop and playing Thoughtseize on turn two or turn three. Well, there was a conversation there that, that Lee had with Ayers. It wouldn't surprise me if he had something to do on turn one, but maybe his mana is going to be tight going forward, and uh, maybe he just wants to, to have the information before curving out with his threats. Well, there is a Scrap Heap Scrounger. This Fabled Passage looks like it's reserved for red mana now to be able to play Glythos on turn number three. So there is the Fabled Passage searching up the basic mountain. And we are going to be heading back over to Justin Miller. This is a forest. That is a Clythos. And now we are heading back over to Russell Lee with an active Scrap Heap Scrounger. Thoughtseize. He's going to take the Languish, and it's just been lands here for Justin Miller, as far as his draw steps are concerned. Temple of Abandoned Breeding Pool and Temple Garden. Good news for Lee. That language not castable anyway, but good to get that one out of the way. Not to worry about black mana off the top. Now there's a Bloodsoe champion. This is a castle lock lane. And we're going to head back over to Justin Miller. He'll draw a card. There goes the thoughts. He's gained a little bit of life. niv Mizzet Reborn was the draw. I got a red, a green, a blue, or a black. So here's a Temple Garden. That'll give you your white. Well, maybe. He might go to Breeding Pool instead. Okay, let's go to Temple Garden. Yeah, it doesn't work. he can only generate red or green, and he already has a mount in a forest, yeah. so he can't do it this turn. Is it time for a wrinkle? It is. Here come the beatdowns. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And have each player discard a card as well. So now we're going to go back over to Justin Miller. He'll activate the Clythos. Breeding Pool is going to come on untapped. And there is Niv Mizzet. Green, white, red, blue, black. There it is. Let's see the top ten. At least Teferi's coming home. Looks like Hero might be as well. So here's Abrupt Decay. Teferi. Hero. Okay. Good mix of stuff. Yeah, that's a good mix of stuff. Some stuff for the battlefield, some removal. An instant, which is not bad. Yeah. All right, let's go back over to Russell Lee. Uh, timely with the Noxious Grasp. Yeah, it's all it's all of them. Yep. So, you know. <laughs> so it's going to work? So I was talking about it's on the sideboard. All the color haters, you know, they just kind of work because, yeah. you know, going to have something. Yep. <laughs> now there is a Blood Soak Champion. And now is a good time to get in with all these creatures. Rankle at its best when you are empty-handed. Means you don't mind using the discard ability. So three, six, seven, eight. Although, how how good is the discard in the spot here with um, Miller having just gassed up here? Might want yeah, to pick I mean, something different. I, I think I think we'll probably see Russell pick something different here in this spot. I think he's confirming that with Daryl at the moment. Because there's no way that you can you can cause Miller to discard a card here that's going to keep him off of two spells in one turn. Mm -hmm. If you think the game is maybe going to go on for many more turns, then I like getting a card out of his hand. If you think you might be ending the game in a turn, then I, I'm less interested.
So you see Justin Miller is counting up all that combat damage. I think we'll find out soon enough. It looks like it was going to be discard. So Teferi looks like it's headed to the graveyard. Miller at three, Lee at 13. And here we go. Yeah, I was a little interested to see the Teferi discarded there because it feels like Uru's kind of the free one to discard in that spot. You have the option of escaping, and it's not like you can just play Nuru out of your hand this turn. That's just not going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. Not like Teferi's great on this battlefield either. Well, I guess he can't Uru and Decay, right? Because he has to... You know, the man is too weird. He's got to tap the temple to be able to escape, and then he can't Decay because he doesn't have black mana from anywhere else. Yeah, this is this is kind of a messed well, up situation. There's a lot. I, I am... I am. Let's say this. I'm really tracking Miller's lands in these sure. games because all the sequences are predicated on what can... Like, literally, what can he actually do? Yep. <laughs> Deafening Clarion. That... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's a price check for white mana. Yeah, that's a bit of a whammy. No, you don't. And it's tough too because you know you might have had definitely clear out in the back of your head as a card that you could have drawn here, but you maybe you need to use the Temple Garden to, pl to play the the Euro, and it, it, it's it, it's tough to just get it all right. Yeah, you know, feels like definitely Clarion's your big hit though. I yeah. would be trying. Uh, that's the yeah. one card that could actually pull you out of this. Yeah. Yeah, and he's just going to concede the game because he can't get himself out of this sticky situation. So Russell Lee is going to win this game and match here over Justin Miller. Two games to zero. Mono Black Aggro is going to put the team of Ayers Lee and Fortinelli on the board. And we're going to be moving to another match here in just a moment as the team of Miles Miller and Stetter are behind a little bit here. So it looks like we're going to be heading down to standard now. Well, that's where Bobby Fortinelli is going to be playing against Nick Stetter. Mono Red Aggro versus Team of Reclamation. We talked about at the top of the show just how good Team of Reclamation did look last weekend in the hands of Will Pulliam. He lost one match the entire weekend. It was in the finals to Corey Baumeister playing Azorius Control. So now we hop into this game where, for Nick Stetter, he has a Wilderness Reclamation and an Omen of the Sea on the battlefield. Along with four lands, let's make it five now with a Temple of Epiphany going up against Bobby Fortinelli, who's currently up a game. Fortinelli has a Fervent Champion, a Robber of the Rich, and they're all headed to the graveyard now, given the Storm's Wrath. Rulers Reclamation will trigger. These lands will untap, and we're headed back over to Fortinelli. 20 to 11 in favor of Bobby, but his battlefield just got swept away. And his hand is filled with, you know, cards that he's playing with, which is not good right now. <laughs> That's an eloquent way to describe it. You know what I mean? It's just... It's a lot of the same stuff. Cards <laughs> that he's playing with. Yeah. Someone who plays a lot of beatdown decks, you certainly had the experience of looking at your hand and thinking, I chose this. These are the cards I elected to play. I always choose this. <laughs> I'll never not choose this. Well, there's a knucklehead. The Tin Street Dodger. Yep. That's the definition of a knucklehead. Listen, if you if you like ginger brute, there's no end of ginger brutes that are legal right now. There's another. It's the most brute. it's the most ginger brute flush format I've ever seen. Oh. How about an attack for two? Big hit. Yeah, that's what you call that. Every point counts. Yeah, they all add up. Yep. Now here's light up the stage, a card that's gotten worse in red decks. Now in standard. Yeah, still, still powerful. The cards are so bad. So <laughs> it doesn't really play all that well with Ember Cleave. Mm -hmm. And if you play it with, you know, all the Ginger Brutes, then you're just peeling two Ginger Brutes a lot of the time. Hard to thread the right needle between speed, reliability, and...
powerful things to hit. I have not been able to sort it out myself. Fortinelli on three copies of Light Up the Stage this weekend. There's a mountain. Going to save that Dodger for later. Going to put it in his back pocket. Now you better <laughs> believe it. Brazen Barr was going to join off of an adventure and onto the battlefield. And now Nick Setter will draw a card. Not a whole lot, I think, going on Setter's side here. A couple more lands in hand. Brazen Borrower is not good on this battlefield. No Castle Vantress to sort out his draw step. Fortinelli just out here dodging. Omen of the Sea. We're going to sack that. Scry 2. There's Basic Forest. And we're going to trigger Wilderness Reclamation. Float some manas. And it looks like just passing the turn back. So nothing there for Nick Setter to do with the floated mana. Don't know the strength of his hand at this stage in time, but it doesn't appear there's an expansion explosion hanging out. So we're going to head back over to Bobby Fortinelli. So keep in mind, did leave on top with one of the scries there. It is worth noting. This is an annex. A new one from Theros Beyond Death that looks like it may not be resolving or there may be a response. It's going to be Flame Sweep in response. Hmm. Flames is going to deal two damage to all those creatures. Fornelli paid off with the patience with the Dodger last turn. Mm -hmm. Here's Claim the Firstborn. So, Brazen Borrower, come on over here. How's some beatdown sound? Well, it looks like. It looks like this match may have ended. Yeah. Looks like we may have got a w, w here. So, looks like the team of heirs, Lee and Fortinelli, able to get the job done here over Miles, Miller, and Stetter. So. Some good beatdowns there. Russell Lee able to weather the storm of just a ton of removal on the five-color Div Mizzet side. And Fortinelli, we didn't get a good glimpse of it, but it looked like Stetter just couldn't find one of his...